Guten Abend, sehr geehrte Damen und Herren und uh, herzlich Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome to the next event um, as part of the series Houses of Glass, Poland and Europe's Struggle for Modernity in the 20th Century. My name is Małgorzata Jędrzejczyk. I am a curator and an art historian, and I work at the Pilecki Institute here in Berlin, and I'm responsible for the project Exercising Modernity. Today is the 8th of July, so we are at the beginning of the summer break, which means that our today's event, the last one, is before we go um, to the summer break. But we hope to present to you, ladies and gentlemen, an interesting program again in uh, fall that will deal with Polish modernity and European modernity. Our today's uh, guest is um, uh, Dorota Lesniak Rychlak who is going to give a lecture about the history of uh, architecture in Poland. The lecture will um, be focused on life and uh, work on uh, of Adolf Szyszko Bochusz. The title of today's uh, lecture, um, Designing uh, Monuments. Um, Dorota Rych uh, lesniak Rychlak is, among other uh, thinks editor-in-chief of the quarterly Alto Portrait. Um, she's founder and chairman of the board of the Institute of Architecture Foundation, curator and co-curator of many exhibitions, among others, Figure Niemożliwe, Impossible Figures, at the Polish Pavilion at the 14th Venice Architecture Biennale. Um, she was also a curator of a um, an exhibition, finally, uh, in the own house and also um, the Polish House in Transformation, and also a festival, Warszawa w Budowie, Warsaw Under Construction, Museum of Modern Art. Um, Dorota Lesniak Rychlak is also the initiator and um, editor of important publications from the canon of architectural theory and practice, among others, she was uh, the co-editor of the Polish edition of um, Peter Zumtor, Myślenie Architekturą, um, Johanny Palasma, Oczy Skóry, The Eyes of Skin, and um, she was also the editor of um, Texts of Modernism, Anthology of Polish Architectural Theory and Criticism, 1918 until 1981, and the German title um, Accordingly, uh, a warm welcome to you, dear Dorota. It's a, a great pleasure that you are here tonight with us, and I'm very interested to listen to your lecture, to find out about your um, new interpretation of the history of Polish modernity, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to see how you um, connect the history to the present and to the here and now. After the lecture, you will have the chance, ladies and gentlemen, to ask questions to our lecturer. Uh, if you would like to ask a question, please write it down in the Q&A uh, section, which is accessible through um, the menu bar at the bottom of your Zoom window. We will ask these questions to um, Dorota lesniak Rychlak. The lecture is being interpreted into German by Karolina Golimowska, and the technical support, as always, is being uh, provided by Marek Kowalczyk and Patrick Szostak. And at this point, I would like to pass it on to our guest, Dorota lesniak Rychlak, and I would like to wish you a pleasant evening. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Małgosia uh, for and the Pilecki Institute very much for this kind invitation to this very interesting cycle dealing with broad senses of modernity. And uh, as uh, Małgorzata already mentioned, I work as an editor of Autoportal Journal uh, dealing with space as cultural phenomena and also curated several architectural exhibitions. And, and this um, shows that architecture mostly interests me in the context of social, economical and political relations. Having said that, I would like to stress that I'm not an expert on the interwar architecture. 
uh, as for example my colleague from the same foundation Michał Wiśniewski is who also is the author of the monograph of Szeszko Bokusz of, of, of the uh, architect the hero of uh, to, today's lecture so please treat my talk rather like a reflection uh, on the problems of designs of Adolf Szyszko Bokusz, its interpretations in the exhibitions we prepared, uh, which already Mogorzata also mentioned, and the reference it has to the contemporary Polish modernity, because I think uh, it somehow very much connects the interwar period and the current situation, um, God have many parallel traits. Um, my talk will consist of two major parts. In the first, I would like to talk about the work of Adolf Szyszko Bochusz, who is a, the interwar Polish architect, very active also in the field of the preservation of modern monuments. And I would like to present some of his designs, uh, which are very much grounded in tradition and also his interpretation of modernism in designs uh, of uh, related to institutions of power as he was a quite influential figure. In the second part of my lecture I would like to discuss the work we, so a little bit self-referential uh, it will be, as curatorial team from Krakow, uh, from an NGO we called ourselves Institute of Architecture established in 2011. Uh, so we presented this work at 14th International Biennale of Architecture in Venice, curated by Rem Kuohas. It was in 2014. And the installation proposed together by our team with artist Jakub Wojnarowski was entitled Impossible Objects. And it was, uh, of course, connected to the Bohusz, as you might have guessed, uh, and mostly devoted to the impossibility of Polish modernity, but also the contradictions that are inscribed within the modernist project. I would like to discuss this issue and show the contemporary significance. I will also refer to other, some other uh, exhibitions uh, which were also devoted to Szyszko Bohusz architecture. So let me move to the slides. And um, yes, I will have to come back to the beginning. Okay, um, and uh, so so the title is Designing Monuments of the Szyszko Bochusz and the Architecture of the State. And uh, here are some exhibitions uh, that, that we curated starting with, with this topic in 2013. It was called Reaction to Modernism in National Museum of, in Krakow. Then, uh, in the same time as Biennale in, in Venice, was the show called Monument uh, uh, at Zahenta National Gallery of Art in Warsaw. Uh, here are some shots uh, from the design of the exhibitions. And, and uh, at the same time, this was the Polish Pavilion at Viennese Biennale uh, in 2014. Uh, the international, the, the impossible objects. Uh, design. As you see, this is the canopy and I will present some more about it later on. And uh, the last uh, show we did on um, on uh, Szyszko Bokusz, it, it is in a tiny uh, private gallery in Krakow, uh, which was called Corpora Dormio. This is a quotation from the, from the canopy you so. saw. And, and again, we contributed, uh, collaborated on this with Jakub Wojnarowski. So um, let me start with three quotes. And, and these quotes are, um, uh, two of them are from uh, our hero, uh, but the first one is from Champions of Modernity. So Louis III, Ferdinand Leger and Sigrid Gideon published the, uh, the Nine Points on Monumentality in 1943. 
um, and, and they write as such. Every bygone period which shaped a real cultural life has the, had the power and the capacity to create these symbols. Monuments are, therefore, only possible in periods in which a unifying consciousness and unifying culture exists. Periods which exist for the monument have been unable to create lasting monuments. Um, so this is the quotation, end of quote. And the words of the hero of my lecture, Adolf Szyszko Bochusz, taken from two articles he wrote as early as 1910 and 1911, that was the very beginning of his career. Um, first, first is the quotation from the article entitled On the Matter of Restoring Architectural Monuments. We only mean to underscore how difficult and how dangerous is the professor, profession of a monument conservator from whom we demand two seemingly contradictory things. On one hand, giving up in a particular case his own creative drive, which shall prevent him from modernizing the ancient character of the historical buildings. And on the other hand, an honest artistry in comprehending and perceiving the details, which must be filled in as an absolute necessity. The artist conservator should approach these details not just with the compasses and the set square of a regular draughtsman, but with the same artistic feeling which most probably informed the ancient man, ma, master. So we have the antiquity, uh, uh, antiquity as a point of reference for his own uh, practice as, uh, as a monument conservator and what it actually means to, to modernize. And then comes another quotation from the article uh, which he devoted to the title is on the meaning of tradition in the architecture of today. So the architecture of today apparently seems that it's something, some kind of uh, modern or contemporary architecture. And Szyszko Bochus writes as such, not the banal mimicry of forms which exist here and there in Polish lands, not enlarging them or reducing in size, but a total recasting of these forms. So we see the operation that he, he is going to make. In one's own imagination and deriving a synthesis thereof may afford us a new architecture. We must strive for our buildings to have all the positive features of the old ones, to have a soul, familiarity, simplicity, logic of composition, sometimes the richness of decoration, sometimes the calm interplay of planes, but above all, always the Polish soul, exclamation mark. May continuous communion with those historic buildings protect us from acquiring mannerism, and the renaissance of our architecture may come sooner than we imagined. These quotes, show very much the relationship of Szyszko Bohus to the architectural tradition. His thoughts grounded very much in the notion of continu continuity, not a modernist rapture. And also show his devotion to memory, as well as his understanding of conservation of monuments at the very beginning of, of his career. So here we have our hero. And I would like to discuss uh, monuments and, and, uh, I uh, and would like to propose some critical re reading of monuments. As a monument, I would, for the purpose of this lecture, understand three uh, categories of objects, buildings, and the meaning usually connected to them. First, I would uh, talk or, or um, point to monuments as this understood as witnesses of the past, historical buildings, uh, and the act of the preservation, alteration, renovation, also seen in a political sense as a result of, of uh, conscious political decisions uh, and some ideology that, uh, that is usually behind it. And uh, second, I would like to talk about monuments, tools of memory or uh, ideological formation. So the new constructions with a very strong symbolic background often combined with national ideology. I think can be both buildings and monuments. 
And third category, monument, a sign of a memory of a person or event, an official statue or tomb, um, often of a hero whose burials and mausolea became political manifestations in the interwar period, especially in, in, in Second Republic of Poland. And Szyszko Bohusz contributed significantly on all these fields. Uh, and of course, when we talk about uh, modernity, we have to distinguish it from modernization, but often we have to the, the two um, intertwine. And, and also modernism is not uh, entirely the same thing as, 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 as modernity. And this was something which was also present in our work at Biennale. Uh, first of all, um, the, the, we also wanted an, uh, so to see the nation as a quite modern concept. This is, this is, uh, this is important uh, for, for the reading of, of this work. As, uh, as wrote Benedict Anderson in this, and his imagined communities. So, so that the nation is constructed around the void, something that is imagined, but not given. And in, in Poland's case, it was the double void, because uh, first the nation is itself, it's a construct, but also in 19th century, um, Poland didn't, didn't exist as a state, therefore there was this double void. And um, of course, there was a, a, a huge um, effort to organize somehow this common um, imagination, and the, the, this was done by summary, ceremonies around memories, state events, religious procession, and, and these events maintain and revive uh, the memory. Uh, in terms of restoration, but also creating common memory as such, I would like to refer to Szyszko Bohusz's design for Wawel Castle and Castle in Warsaw, Royal Castle in Warsaw. I would like to also to show his involvement in creating monuments as um, tools of memory and ideological formation in two of his works, uh, Piłsudski's House in Oleandry and Castle in, in Wisła. Um, also, he designed uh, monuments as tomb of national heroes. So, for example, the, the crypt and sarcophagus of the poet Juliusz Słowacki, a monument uh, to Józef Bem, the general, and also ceremonies uh, as celebrations of the nation with a scandal that accompanied uh, Piłsudski's burial at the Wawel Castle. So, uh, what is important is also the notion of uh, monumentality expressed in the architectural forms. Sometimes, uh, somehow, perhaps the tension with the new architecture of modernity, but, uh, but when, when combined with this desire of monumentality, it requires references to the past, often ancient and huge scale, and it's a, a, a bit uh, contradicts the, the term. Uh, this, uh, this can also be expressed, this tradition, this bond with history by attachment to the stone, relationship to, to material, use of building techniques grounded in tradition, and some relationship to antiquity. In Szyszko Bohusz's work, we will not find modernism with social agenda, like socialist architects in Warsaw, for example, Szymon Circus or, or, or Bukalsce. But rather adapting the style as one, the style, the modernism, as one of the many possible costumes that could refer to 19th century architecture parlant. So he was choosing what, what was perhaps popular or, or in fashion. And, um, and as, as I already mentioned, we don't see a modernist rupture in his work, rather the use of fashionable style there. And, and here is the the example of this, um, the, the House of the Artist Society in Krakow, uh, um, as we always compare ourselves to the West, this is, um, this is said to be the closest example of Bauhausian architecture in, in Krakow. But returning to, to Szyszko Bohusz's prominent figure, um, the time of the, after the First World War was the time of several new nations that emerged, especially after the fall of the 
Austro-Hungarian Empire. And there was a strong need for theorizing the idea of a nation and orchestrating its monuments and ceremonies. This need was very much met with common architects' desire to create big schemes, imposing buildings, and to communicate the modernity of the states they worked for. In this light, Szyszko Bohu's career is not surprising, however, still quite exceptional, taking into account the scale and significance of the designs he prepared. He was even nicknamed Adolf Szyszko Bohusz during the time of his um, career. So, Wszystko means all in Polish, so that he was both prolific in, in his work and very prominent as an architect. He was born in 1883, educated in the tradition of Beaux Arts at the Academy of Fine Arts in Petersburg. Um, as I mentioned, Poland didn't exist at the time of his youth as a state, was partitioned into Prussia, Russia and Austro-Hungarian Empire, and his relatives lived in the Russian part. He was a very talented student and very soon started cooperating with commission preoccupied with preservation of monuments from Krakow, and preparing drawing of um, Catholic, uh, historic churches, synagogues, castle. As a member of workshop, because he studied at Academy of uh, Fine Arts in Petersburg, at the workshop of Leonti Benoit, with uh, actually his friend from two years younger was uh, architect Lev Rudnyev, known later on for his socialist realist designs. He was taught in classicist architecture, but also open to the multiple idioms of local architecture. In 1910, he moved to Krakow, um, which was not an obvious choice for somebody brought up in the industrial part of the Russian Empire. And he established his own practice and was offered a post, uh, teaching post at Fac uh, Fine Academy of, uh, Academy of Fine Arts in Krakow. But very soon, two years later, he uh, um, was teaching and, uh, and moved to Lviv, who was a bigger uh, city, more of a metropolis in 2000, in, in, in 1912. Uh, um, and he was teaching in the Department of Modern Design. Here we can see the poster and the plan of the exhibition uh, of architecture and interiors in the garden surroundings. So that was organized in, in, in Krakow by the Circle of Architects and Artists. And uh, and uh, Szyszko Bohus was one of the, uh, probably the youngest architect who took part in, 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 in this, um, um, this exhibition, which actually was quite in, interesting in scale because it, uh, it uh, uh, advanced uh, putting up the, the mock-ups mock or the uh, models uh, in, in the real scale of different uh, housing for different class, social classes. And, and Szyszko Bohusz's design, he was uh, uh, designing for a craftsman. So we can see this modest, mod modest and simple structure down here. Uh, whereas um, above we see the entrance pavilion by Józef Czarkowski, very much sort of a, a Krakow school style, uh, quite ornamental. And um, well, and then uh, then came the very crucial point in in, in his whole career, uh, because he was uh, during the first world uh, war he joined the Polish legions under Józef Piłsudski's command, and fought on the Polish front. So um, it, it didn't. Uh, it didn't last long, but it was two years of his life a very significant. Keep a significant point. He was released from the army on the request of Lviv Polytechnics and returned to Lviv, but very soon was summoned to become director of the restoration of the Vapo Castle, position he held for over 30 years. And he was very active on several fields during the, this time, uh, his own practice, uh, producing over 100 designs, restorator, working on very prominent monuments, and also a well-established architectural teacher, professor, rector of the several universities, and also chief editor of Krakow important architectural periodic 
the architect. And when we first, uh, as a team, started working on Szyszko Bochusz's oeuvre, we wanted to see him as a modernist. And the exhibition prepared for the National Museum, and I will come back to the, to the slide. Um, the National Museum in Krakow in 2014 13 was entitled Reaction to Modernism. In the title, we were referring to the book by Jeffrey Herr, Reactionary Modernism, Technology, Culture and Politics in Weimar and the Third Reich. Uh, to describe the mixture, and, and that was the term coined by uh, Herf, um, this reactionary modernism, the great enthusiasm for modern technology, but with a rejection of the enlightenment and the values that an institution of liberal democracy, which was characteristic of the German conservative revolution, uh, revolutionary movement and Nazism. So basically it means that we employing as a state um, modern technology, but um, without the, the uh, liberal values and, and, and liberal democracy values. And it, uh, in a way for us, it was, uh, it was a bit appropriate to, to, to somehow apply this term for uh, Adolf Szyszko Bochusz as, uh, as, um, uh, as Piłsudski's architect, also um, quite a strong leader and, and uh, after the coup d'etat um, semi-dictator probably. Um, but but soon after <coughs> after this we started um, to focus more on his relationship with tradition and the creation of common national imagination in the time of the Second Republic in, in, of Poland. Um, and so this was uh, presented to, uh, more on this uh, show in Zahenta. Uh, one of his most important tasks, as, as I said, was um, the acting as a conservator and preservator of the Babel Hill. But there, uh, he was not the first one to create like this common imaginary sphere. Uh, as um, in 1905, the Austrian army handed over the historical buildings of Bavaria Castle to the authorities of Kingdom of then Galicia and Lodomeria. And uh, the works, the conservation works that uh, co commenced there because the, 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 the castle was really run down uh, after several fires. But at the same time, uh, Stanisław Wyspiański, the poet and artist, and Władysław Akieski, architect, developed the design called Acropolis uh, and the concept of rebuilding the whole Wawel Hill. Uh, um, and with really imposing neo-Renaissance structures. So it was a design with a name, a very specific aim to refocus the life of the nation in its historical location. And in the rather pathetic concept, they envisioned the construction of the western side of the hill of neo-Renaissance building that are here. Uh, and um, massive dome that would perform political, cultural, cultural and religious functions. These visions, although never realized, define the direction of the works within Wawel for many years to come. Uh, so when <coughs> Szyszko Bochusz was elected the director of the castle of uh, castle restoration and his works there had shaped today's appearance of the castle. So basically what we have now and what what is in the common imagination of the Poles um, as uh, the, the royal Wawel Castle in Krakow is actually a 20th century creation of, uh, of our hero. Um, so, so what he did in the interwar period was that he directed works aimed at the recreation of the royal chambers, adapting the building for the purpose of the museum and the residence to the head of the state. Uh, so, uh, Szyszko Bochusz also, uh, although he acted as architect and conservator, but also initiated the national action of coll collecting funds, which were made, which made it possible for the works to continue at Wawel. 
During World War II, he did not abandon the castle, but he worked there still as an assistant to German architects, uh, actually a relative of Hans Frank, the governor of the, uh, uh, yeah, the, the governor of the, uh, of this part. His activity conducted with the knowledge and approval of clandestine authorities made it possible to monitor the changes introduced by Hitler's army. After the war, Szyszko Bohus again took the position of the director of the restoration, but was also accused of collaboration with the Nazis, and there was a kind of uh, trial, uh, and he was uh, actually cleared of the accusation, but still his health seriously deteriorated and he died uh, um, three years after the war. Um, so for over 30 years of his work at Wawel, Szyszko Bohus prepared four architectural projects, plans for comp comprehensive developments of the Wawel Hill. What is quite striking, as I mentioned, that this contemporary shape of the monument, known to every child in Poland, was mostly created by our hero. But, uh, but also I would like to talk about the designs, perhaps luckily he failed to execute. I would like to focus on the designs of, um, design of Pantheon. Uh, and, and so we see him now taking on the task that was first uh, proposed by by Vespiański. So, so we have this, um, again, this relationship to antiquity. So the, the Acropolis, here we have Pantheon. Um, and as I mentioned, Poland's newly reinstated independence became an impulse to, in, impulse to develop a new concept. Wawel was designated as the representative building of the Republic. What, and Szyszko Bohus uh, developed this plan of Pantheon in 1919, appropriate for the function, making it possible to house large scale state events and religious celebrations. Um, the new concept proposed radical, although as we see not as radical as uh, Vespiański's uh, transformation of the Royal Hill, coupled with demolition of the milita Austrian military hospital buildings, which were to be replaced by Campo Santo, as, uh, as Szyszko Bohus called it. A large pentagonal courtyard enclosed with two-story arcades uh, to the west and to the south. So here we have this Pantheon, here we have the Cathedral Square, and, and the rostrum and terraces. So basically what Szyszko Bohus created was the big stage for national and religious um, events. Uh, by what architectural means, uh, the level of the courtyard was to be lowered and it was to be entered by the grand flight of stairs. The architects proposed to place an open air altar um, in, in this very center, it's here, um, uh, at the courtyard's axis, between stairs um, to the Pantheon and building of the, of the former royal kitchen, cathedral courtyard was planned with tall stairs leading, leading to the rostrum. The rostrum was to be fitted with a terrace to the east, placed above the elongated one-story structure of the lapidary. So here we have a place of uh, common memory and also a stage of very uh, carefully orchestrated national uh, and religious event. Uh, this creation coincided uh, with Szyszko Bohus's most important archaeological findings at the Wawel Hill. In 1918 um, he found the remains of pre-Romanesque rotunda of Saint Felix and Adaptus. And uh, it was reconstructed according to his designs, and it was also inaugurated for, for sightseeing. The findings, which were of really fundamental significance to the research into Wawel's history, were made available to the public in 1925 as a separate archaeological reserve uh, arranged in the basement of the Westerly Wing. Throughout the interwar period, Adolf Szyszko Bohus also continued the works on the renovation of the castle walls, construct, reconstructing and sometimes creating a new the loggia of the Danish tower and um, 
uh, and the battery courtyard and more. So the, here is uh, uh, still the section of the, the, um, the Pantheon concept. We see the, the double story arcades, which were uh, surrounding the, and the altar in the middle down here. Um, and, and here are some other conservation works uh, by Adolf Krzyszko Bohusz, uh, especially this um, coat of arms um, gate, which was new gates created by Krzyszko Bohusz himself. And on the left uh, side, we see the little plates, which were his idea of involving um, and raising, fundraising. So he, he um, asked the uh, individuals, citizens, and also some companies, firms to contribute to the restoration of the castle. And then they were and still are commemorated on the walls of the, uh, of the, of the castle. So quite clever in terms of organization. And well, and uh, uh, as I, um, as, and he still continued there, um, the work with castle, also with castle interiors, where he adapted chamber after chambers to serve the purpose first of museum exhibitions and also as a residence to the head of the state, which was also later on after this coup d'etat, Józef Piłsudski. Uh, so we have here the, the royal chambers, the senator's hall, and the interior of um, Kurzastopka. And what is quite uh, surprising that he invited modern artists to contribute to this uh, uh, ceiling paintings. So they are very modern, strikingly modern, um, uh, but surprisingly somehow worked there. Um, so the the. <clears throat> Designs which uh, Adolf Szkobochus realized at the Wawel Castle often stirred controversy. The architect's contributions to the studies upon the history of the Royal Hill was enormous, and he particularly he was particularly successful in managing the works and raising funds, as I mentioned. His methods uh, of work in such crucial location, consisting of an flexible treatment of historical parts and combining them rather freely. Uh, with modern elements or copies of the original was far removed from the monument conservation doctrine prevalent at the time, which postulated actually only preservation and appro appropriate presentation of the status quo. Uh, so the real chambers uh, as are to a large extent an artist's fantasy, surprisingly successful in rendering the climate and mood of the Renaissance, Renaissance residence. It is worth noting that Adolf Szyszko Bohus was involved in designing scenarios for important events that took place at Wawel, political meetings, patriotic celebrations, state and military festivities. State sets and scripts were, were an ex extension of the consistent structuring of Babel Smith as the living center of national culture by in history. In th this sense, uh, as I showed, Vespiansky's idea found its continuation in Szkobochusz's work, though in a modest way. And if we look for parallel, here we have the ceiling and, and, uh, and freeze at the uh, envoy's room, and what is uh, uh, interesting that we can see the, the construction, which is actually concrete, steel concrete con construction protruding, because it's the photo taken before the the, the ceiling was placed uh, there, the, the Renaissance sort of uh, ceiling. And um, and if we look at the parallel work in Europe at the time, one should mention the design of the Czech Kratchany Castle by Slovenian architect Jozo Plecznik, his con contemporary. Plecznik was actually um, 12 years uh, older, but still. Uh, but uh, Plecznik's work um, is grounded more in the archaic forms of and Minoyan culture, whereas the architecture and interventions of Szyszko Bohusz are grounded rather in local historic architecture and the use of materials as brick and stone, but, but he does it in a simplified modern manner. 
Um, now I would like to move to another design uh, of uh, of uh, Szyszko Bochusz, uh, again connected uh, to, to Piłsudski. Uh, that is a monument to freedom, uh, which was to be the seat of the National Museum in Krakow. And, um, and this was uh, uh, placed uh, in a very significant uh, location, as we see under this big triumphant arch uh, over there, uh, there is a Kościuszko Mount. And the place, the site was the site of the legionaries starting their way to, to fight for the Polish independence. So, so the, <coughs> uh, the idea in the place was connected to the so-called Greater Kraków, what the, what that was the scheme implemented in the interwar period when the construction of the main artery, um, the three poets, Aleja, Trzech, Dieszczuk, was started in the western part of ta town, an axis along which major public buildings were to be located. The goal, goal of the project was to transform a small, overpopulated garnison town which Krakow was at the threshold of the 20th century, into the capital of the southwest frontier, scientific and industrial heart of the country. Aleje were to be by the means for making this vision a reality, uh, as a central space of the newly projected metropolis. So we can see this grandiose scale of this project monument. Um, so, so one of the first projects presented for this location was actually this concept of the Monument to Freedom, so the National Museum in Krakow. And the new building was to symbolize a national myth. Art and memory were to find a new home in this very location, where Piłsudski's legion started its march toward the Russian border in August 1914. Plot of land which the city allocated for the purpose consists of two unequal parts separated in the middle by the extension of Volska Street, later named Piłsudskiego, of course. Adolf Szyszko Bohusz proposed two versions for this crucial point. The first was the construction of a triumphal arch at the center of the plaza at the axis of Volska Street with vistas opening towards the Kościuszko Mount. On either side of uh, the arch, the architect designed a colonnade which would connect to the museum pavilions. The second concept suggested the construction of monumental colonnades enclosing two frontages of the plaza on the side of the Aleja artillery and this, on the side of Bonia, the commons, which was the major uh, big meadow and very close to the center of Krakow and still is. The triumphal arch in the place where the soldiers of the Cadre Company ma had marched at the same axis as the monument to Kościuszko symbolically welded together the killer elements of the history of the nation while enhancing the myth of the legions and of Józef Piłsudski on the one hand and on the other hand affirming Kraków's role in, as a space of special significance in the history of the Polish state. And now I would like to move to another um, uh, another example of very monumental, actually, uh, architecture. Uh, and on the other hand, and very much grounded in, in say, Russian neoclassicism. This was the, the Bank of the Postal Savings Society, a competition that was held in 12, uh, 1921. Um, the winning concept didn't please the investors, so they commissioned a building plan from Ador Bohus. And so this monumental building, four-story building, bank basically, combined the function of the bank and offices with, the, uh, with that of residential quarters. So there was some, some housing also in this, in this building. And it, it is built in very modern, um, reinforced concrete structure. Um, there are three wings to this building. Uh, the corner of the site of Yellowpole Street has been rounded, so this is this, uh, this corner. Um, and, and here the main entrance to the bank is uh, situated. Above the entrance we see the large 
windows, rectangular windows of the operations room, bank operations. And the other corners of the building uh, uh, has, have been accentuated with projections. So, so here you can see this, um, resembling keep towers, which invest the building with an air of a fortress a little bit, a, a grandiose Corinthian half columns and uh, the profile cornices as, as you see very much protruding. Uh, here the attic and the rich sculpted decorations all combined to give the buildings elevations their personality. The monumental classic, uh, classicizing forms of the building fall within the movement of academic classicism of the 20s. So th this this building still is a very remarkable structure, uh, also very imposing in scale. It was certainly the biggest building of the time in, in Krakow. And um, moving on, we have the the mm, uh, the mausoleum of Yusuf Bam in, in Tarnow. Uh, but perhaps I would like to also firstly speak about. Oh, no, I will come back to this later. Okay, so uh, so the mausoleum of Yusuf Bam Tarnov again a very interesting um, structure. You can see it on the contemporary photograph. Um, this uh, the origin of the mausoleum. It was designed and built in uh, 1928 and, and, and nine, and it's linked to restoring the ashes of the general Yusuf to Poland. He was the national hero of Poland, fighting for independence in 1830, Hungary and Turkey. And, um, and what is important, because it's a very strange grave, as you may see, uh, he was, it was built on an island in the middle of the artificial pond, uh, within the grounds of the Rifleman's Association's gardens in Tarnow. Um, it is so extravagant because it was not possible to bury Bam in, in a Catholic cemetery because the general converted to Islam during his service um, in Turkey. So I would say that uh, Adoshis Kobohut was very clever in, in, in solving this quite difficult task uh, for the designer. And he designed it in the form of six pairs of composite columns placed on a two-step uh, reinforced concrete slab, which you can see down there. The column supports uh, a rectangular sarcophagus, uh, which is raised visually presenting as a high attic. Sides of the sarcophagus were decorated with inscription in Antigua font in Polish, Hungarian and Turkish languages. Uh, the, the dates were also carved in stone relating to Bem's death, uh, birth, death and return of his remains to Poland. On the plinth, uh, obs were placed connected with metal chains, so this is, this is uh, probably referring to the, to the army, to the canons of the army. Uh, a reminder that there was artillery that was the general military formation. This monumental neoclassical form of the mausoleum fall within the academic classicist movement of um, from the period, the, the, the represented also by other works of Szyszko Bochus, uh, already mentioned, Postal Saving Society. And here we have a very strong symbolism. We have the tomb of an actual hero, hero ceremonies of the burial, and a very specific, which we, we can see here, even strange design of the tomb, a very charged one, also elevated uh, from the ground. Ben's funeral was an important state event, but even more so was the funeral, or rather bringing back the remains of Jurusz Słowacki, renowned Romanticism poet, favorite poet of Józef Piłsudski. And I will, I will move to the, the, we will come back to the castle later on. And uh, the state burial of Jurusz Słowacki, um, this was, uh, this was, um, an important state event organized by, by Józef Piłsudski. 
And so from Paris, the coffin was transported in a carriage to L'Église de la Madeleine in Paris. Then um, it sailed uh, by Navy ship to Gdynia. Uh, then the coffin sailed down the Vistula High to Warsaw when it was taken to the city cathedral on a carriage pulled by eight horses. And then from Warsaw, it went to Krakow by train and we can see the grand finale here at the Wawel courtyard. Uh, so the national um, sort of uh, theater of this 19th century, you would, you would say rituals. And this was the state funeral organized by the Polish Republic. This was stressed by Piłsudski in his speech. Addressing the legionaries who were carrying the coffin, he said, uh, in his speech, um, gentlemen, in the name of the government of Poland, I bid you carry the coffin of Juliusz Słowacki into the royal crypt, for he was peer of the kings. So this royal um, cemetery was now uh, to be also joined by the poets, the big poets, as they are peer uh, of kings, uh, in the Piłsudski's word. Um, Szyszko Bochusz's primary role in this national event was to alter the crypt to accommodate the sarcophagus that he designed himself. So again, another, another uh, tomb designed by, by Adolf Szyszko Bochusz. Uh, to join in, he also remodeled the crypt um, uh, to join with Mickiewicz crypt and Słowacki. Uh, designed um, a massive block of black Krzeszowice uh, marble with a cross on the top and a silver laurel with, with uh, inscription we can see here. And now I would like to come back to the this uh, structure, which is the uh, castle in Wisła, and probably this is the most uh, bizarre or strange or, or surprising um, building of uh, in Adolf Szyszko Bochusz's career. So in a way it's, it's uh, as uh, several researchers has put a modern castle, so a kind of contradiction in its terms. So this castle of the president of the Polish Republic in uh, Wisła was built between uh, 1929 and 33 as a gift from the autonomous, uh, autonomous region of Silesia to the head of the revived Polish state. The presidential, because it was presidential summer residence, was located on the side of the former Habsburg hunting lodge near the watershed of Czarna Wisełka and Biała Wisełka. So these were the sources of the river Wisła, which is the national river of the Poles. The plans uh, for these large buildings were commissioned from Adolf Szoszko Bochusz. And so the castle, as we see, is a reinforced concrete structure filled with bricks. And the elevations are finished with local grade sandstone. Uh, so we have the you know, several blocks of different varying heights adjoining a lower two-story middle part. There is there are higher projections on either side. Seen from the roads, as we see it here, the solid shape of the castle appears to be growing growing out of the hill, mimicking medieval strongholds in a way. And we have also a tower with a protruding. Um, uh, with a flag mast, uh, and also, uh, but on the other uh, uh, on the other side, we have this more uh, well, notion of a, of a palace establishment of the modern era. The centrally placed sizable portal with Silesian eagle. This is this is uh, here. It's a, re a relief bar produces the scene of symmetry within the composition. So on the other hand, um, coming from the road, we see this uh, quite abstract forms, but, but here again, Szyszko Bochusz is somehow uh, restoring the symmetry into his design. And this is very common feature in, in many of his projects. 
And what is very so what what is very important here that we have this um, modernity and uh, and and medieval uh, tradition in in one building. So we have the the historical narration, the implicitly carrying the connotation with the Piast dynasty, so the first first Polish dynasty which is juxtaposed with contracting, constra uh, contrasting forms of long straps of glass surfaces and flat terraces on top of respective blocks. The functional interiors of the castle re received a modern expression. And so we have to, here we have the plan of the, of the castle. And, um, Mobile and transparent partitions were used to divide the space. Ge geometrical painted decorations turned the castle into three-dimensional artistic compositions, paired with functionalist tubular um, furniture. Also, Shishko Bohush um, invited artists of younger generation to create the interior complex. So we see this really highly um, modernist uh, interiors, uh, dining hall and, and veranda. Although this radical, uh, radical character of the work proved controversial and invited criticism of, on the part of opinion forming artists affiliated with the Krakow School. As a result, the modern expression of the castle has been softened by the introduction of expressionist chandeliers designed by Edmund, Bar uh, Edmund Bartłomiejczyk and stylized folk rugs designed by um, from the workshop on, of, uh, of Walda, uh, Wanda Grotowa. And uh, its original uh, appearance of both buildings did not survive uh, beyond a few years from the completion. Uh, so here we have this uh, more interiors, we have this rugs uh, bringing a little bit the spinning of, of uh, coziness perhaps. And, uh, and already the change design, the, the, the design that we see here uh, is uh, already, uh, possesses already pitched roofs. So here we see this modern flat roof, um, but here you, there is already this, this pitched roof. Um, the original, so so uh, simply the, the the change was fault uh, was caused by the faulty design of terrace drainage system, uh, which led to repeated problems of leaking roofs, uh, and and the change of the uh, of the roofs uh, already was decided uh, before the start of World War Two and um, they were covered with copper sheets. And, and, and uh, this is also interesting because uh, uh, um, evidently Rzeszko Bohusz wanted to have this modern um, feature, uh, so the flat roof, but the placing the castle in the mountains mean, meant um, having probably a lot of snow. And, and, um, and here I would like to a little, add a little bit about the flat roof being a modern problem. And a quotation from Rainier de Graaf, uh, who is a renowned contemporary architect uh, partner with Ron Kulhas at the OMA studio. And he wrote a book called Four Walls and the Roof. And he writes as such, when did the pitched roof stop being a necessity? Something which uh, we, always as, uh, associate with modern movement. The dirty secret, uh, the graph continues, of modern architecture is that it never did. We stopped using it without any superior solution having presented itself. The omission of the pitched roof is an intentional technological regression, something which is very much opposed to the progress, apparent. A deliberate foregoing of the best solutions in favor of an aesthetic ideal, a showing function for form, the symbol of, the, of a desire for progress instead of progress itself. We choose to endure the inconvenience, and, and we can still see it now with many, many modern design of the, of the, uh, of the flat roofs. Uh, here, Szyszko Bohusz is preparing design of, for the residence of the president 
and, and he creates this architectural oxymoron, modern castle. So he was playing with the history and myths that bound the creation of Polish nation to Vistula River and the heritage of the Piast dynasty. And um, Zamek was a gift to Mościcki, which is also interesting, president of the Polish uh, Republic, prominent scientist, a politician who had been behind the construction of the state, state works of nitrogen compounds, a big industrial complex on the edge of Tarnów. So Zamek was remarkable for the new conceptions of space design as for standard official uh, architecture. And David Crowley say, uh, says that what strikes him for, for being very important to Szyszko Bohusz and perhaps to his generation of Plecznik Asplund, that there is the sense of historic co continuity running throughout his work. Szyszko Bohusz did not share in the classic, classic avant-garde break from the past, often manifested at its rapture and called new. So he is on the side of the, this uh, grounding the designs in the, in the past. And even, uh, so the quote from Crowley, even the most modernist of his works have a kind of deep vein of antiquarianism, a sense of classical order running through them. And for such a uh, such a realization, I would like to show another design, which is the Marshall Józef Piłsudski House in Krakow, designed by Szyszko Bohusz again, and Stef, uh, Stefan Stroyek. So this is this is a building which uh, serves, uh, especially constructed to serve the mythology of the Marshal Józef Piłsudski and the legions, so the, the military formation he was uh, associated with. And um, and especially after the mentioned coup, coup d'etat, uh, he was um, um, he was all celebrated and it was a, a subject of kind of a personal cult. Uh, so, um, so the, the scheme resulted uh, from a need to commemorate the location of Oleandre, that was the place where the legions started the battle for independence, as I already said. And uh, so the Legionaries Association decided to build in this part of Krakow a multifunctional building under the patronage of the marshal, uh, projected as one element of the larger urban planning scheme which was intended to become an educational and cultural center of the city. The house, of course, name, named after Piłsudski, was to reinforce the myth of Krakow as the holy site of the Poles again. And so this conception, this concept was entrusted to Szyszko Bohusz, who uh, himself served in the legions, and he had ties to Piłsudski's legionaries. And uh, he first um, co proposed the construction of monumental functionalist building, as we can see it here. Uh, but uh, and only this building, this part of the of the whole um, uh, scheme was uh, realized. And probably when we look at this, it looks more abstract, more more modern than it actually should be if what if it was uh, completed in full. Because here we see again this strong axis, the symmetry, the colonnade, and and um, and perhaps some relationship to I don't know uh, uh, Pergamon altar uh, from ancient form from 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 Berlin, which was actually presented then. So the design proposed to construct two identical uh, wings connected with the third a long nofery wing. Uh, uh, further setback, so this is here. The front yard was to be enclosed with a light colonnade on the side of the Bonya Commons. And the building was uh, also, of course, made of uh, reinforced concrete structure. And um, so the, the, and again, the consecration of the, of the wing was um, to mark the anniversary of the Legions marching out to battle on August the 6th, uh, 19, uh, 1934, as we see it here. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and, and 
somehow this is this is quite striking king when we think that this uh, this modernity of the structure is uh, coming out of of this um, uh, piece being incomplete actually it's very it's very interesting uh, but on the other hand we 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 all, all see the flat roofs we have this bent uh, windows big big uh, glasses so we have the the uh, houses of glass as in the uh, title of the of the cycle um, and now we uh, i would like to move to the uh, mm, Perhaps uh, the the royal castle in Warsaw very very uh, shortly as as uh, we are I think um, running out of time. But we have this this is the intervention by 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 Shushko Bohushko again was uh, asked to prepare the adaptation the remodeling of the castle and he placed a flat roof on the top of one of the towers, um, creating a terrace above it. And, but he was also responsible for the design of the gardens, and, and uh, which were not realized before the war, but very recently they, are, they were completed. So, so Szyszko Bohus is coming back with his, with his design. Um, and uh, here we have another project in Warsaw, very important competition um, in 1931. The competition for the Temple of Divine Providence in Warsaw, again a massive, uh, huge uh, building if it had been constructed. And so there was a, an open comp competition for the building, but then, uh, then uh, the results were not, the, the organizer were not happy with the results but, and they started another one. And so the location in the, the Mokoto field that was the location was to receive a church which would hold 5,000 people at the same time. So really a votive temple expressing gratitude for Poland's regaining of her independence. It was intended again as an imposing ceremonial church and a resting place for the highest dignitaries of state and other persons uh, of merit to the motherland. None of the concept plans uh, satisfied the jury and, and there was another competition and, and this design came second. Uh, so, so what he actually designed was to place an artery, um, elegant to run in the very middle of the plan, below the church floor. So, so quite, again, a very sort of modernist uh, uh, idea. And uh, then it was in it itself was to be raised uh, eight meters above the ground, and uh, the temple was to be a dominant within the amphitheatrical plaza, which could be used during mass celebrations. Mm, so here, uh, Shushko Bohush offered again his interpretation of Gothic forms, as he was, for example, on Wawel Castle derived this time from the 14th century Mazovian architecture. Uh, he proposed a spacious free aisle hall on the plan of the square with diamond vault supported uh, on 12 pillars, we, which we uh, see on the plan. Uh, this this uh, scheme was ne uh, never realized and actually there was another competition uh, already after, after the transition. Uh, 1990 and 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 again very similar scandal it was recently completed um, it's uh, it's quite a um, controversial design again um well and uh, now now this is this is a short appendix uh, i would like I, I wanted to show uh, you the uh, uh, Bohusz's own villa in Przegorzały, uh, which was placed uh, above the, the valley of Vistula River. And we see that, that his medieval um, longings were very much present in this design because it looks like, um, I don't know, um, a, a, a tiny castle itself um, with very strong uh, st uh, uh, stonework. And and uh, now uh, I would like to 
talk briefly about Piłsudski's burial and the, the, the structure we used in our designs and, and somehow um, um, modified. This is the, the canopy above the entrance to Silver Bell, Bell Tower. Um, um, here is seen on the left next to the cathedral wall. Uh, so this is the, the burial of the Słowacki, but now here you have the burial of Józef Piłsudski, this uh, crystalline coffin. Um, uh, this was a very important stage event. He was um, um, embalmed and displayed with his saber cap in a glass coffin, so like in the fairy tales, uh, like, like, our, like the sleeping princess. Um, and this um, uh, the, the, again, the, the coffin traveled from Warsaw on a very ceremonial, uh, ceremonial uh, event, and um, then it was placed in the uh, Saint Leonard crypt alongside the tombs of uh, King Jan the uh, third uh, Sobieski and Kościuszko. But the location, you know, uh, this we can see here. But this couldn't be permanent. It was very problematic for Bishop Sapieha, who was already in the conflict with the state authorities the, the installed by, by uh, Piłsudski. And there were also other problems. The, the martial body, the, 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 the coffin was not uh, very uh, tight. The body began to deteriorate. Then the coffin was replaced with another one, which also didn't serve its purpose well. And, and, and this uh, crypt was inadequate. There were coming legionaries who were perhaps also even drunk, disturbing the ceremonies in the cathedral. And it couldn't uh, go on like this. So, um, so there was one solution agreed by all parties to extend Romanesque crypt under the Tower of Silver Bell. This was acceptable to the church because it allowed a separate entrance for the secular pilgrims who wanted to pay homage to the marshal. Szyszko Brochusz prepared several versions of the entrance of the cathedral um, crypt. Here we can see early schemes, including the entrance in the form of the Gothic te temple, caped with a figure of Hussar on horseback. There is also a neo Renaissance version. Here is a modest Gothic. Here we have a Renaissance, uh, neo Renaissance version very much similar to the king tombs in the cathedral. But the constructed entrance, uh, completed in 1937, is less bombastic and modest in size. It features elements that belong to classical tradition. So we can see it also here, a very beautiful uh, picture, very beautiful photograph. Um, Corinthian columns, balustrades, a Latin inscription over there, uh, which says corpora, dor corpora dormium vigilant anime, which means bodies are asleep, but the souls are vigil. And as we see that these columns, they, they don't seem to perform this task of, uh, of burying this uh, plant above the topping, because they, it sits on the hidden post. And this is something perhaps uh, taken from the columns in the Vavil courtyard when we find similar uh, elements. Uh, but nonetheless, this, this canopy, this baldachin seems to float above the stairs as if denying gravity. And uh, here are in, in some other photographs of the funeral. And, and another view of the, of the baldachin from the other side. And uh, what we did for the impossible objects um, uh, installation in Venice, we removed these supporting elements. So we tried to have, uh, it was uh, actually idea of Jakub Wojnarowski, the author uh, of, uh, with whom we co collaborated on the project to have, a, to have some kind of gap, very strong gap bef uh, between this historic forms and the uh, the sort of modern, uh, at least as as it was in the in the brief, uh, this modern form of the of the canopy. 
And it is very interesting what what is uh, what this consists of. So the canopy, it's as David uh, Crowley um, called it, a spolia. So we have remnants of the three empires that divided Poland. First of all, we have the stonework, which was uh, which is seen here which was taken from the granite plinth of the statue of Otto von Bismarck in Poznan. The Nefrit cathedrals, the Nefrit columns are taken from the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral on Saxon Square in Warsaw, so the symbols of Russian domination. And again, the, the capitals and the, the balustrades uh, and the base of the columns are from melted Austrian guns. So basically we have a very strong uh, symbolic piece here. Uh, and um, as again, David Crowley claims that these materials are spolia. So that are re reused architectural components. Uh, the, this is the armor, the enemy of the enemy, which is placed in the monument after the battle. And so, what was what what the Baldakim meant in times when it was built? It was created by the chief conservator, a custodian and trustee of memory. He entered into a dialogue with the condition of architecture there um, and designed the sepulchre of his former commander. This is a very strong figure. At the same time, he cautiously contributed to the creation of the, to the, of the myth of the leader and as it turned out, his own as well. The symbols he proposed was easily comprehensible to the people of his time. Um, in spring of uh, 1937, the commission issuing an opinion of the design of the reconstruction of the crypt wrote, the architectural material of the superstructure should be treated distinctly from the chapel without precluding modern forms. So we have without precluding modern forms, and this is probably this modern form. And such form was used in the crowning of the Baldachim, the simple slab. And uh, as sources indicate, the Shushko Bohush himself was the author of, the, of this text, Corpora Dormiunt Vigilant Anima. The architect simplified the design's form in comparison to his former neo-Gothic and neo-Renaissance proposal, so we have a little bit the uh, answer to this absorbing modernity that was the the uh, curatorial statement of Ram Kulhas at this Biennale, uh, which we played later on. Uh, but but uh, um, so we have a text uh, which is in the spirit of the forefathers Eve by Mitskevich, calling on an important topos in Polish culture, the presence of the forefathers and the actual invasion the engagement in the creation and preservation of identity. And uh, actually, there are more texts uh, at work here. The first is about the spirits keeping vigil. Uh, it serves as a bridge between the present and the past, though it's undermined by the split in the construction, a split in the logic of the object. And the other text is found in the description of the origin of the Baldakim's part the so-called diagram by Szyszko Bohusz, as Jakub Wojnarowski, the author of the prints in the Polish pavilion, terms the structure. And, and what uh, Jakub Wojnarowski uh, claims that, that we actually need to know uh, what these elements come from. So we need an additional text uh, to, this, uh, to this structure to understand it fully. Um, and so uh, this structure in itself is quite modest, but, but the martial cult uh, in this case uh, engaged huge forces, such as the entire mightiness of the Wawel Hill. It was not the canopy in itself, but the royal cathedral, which served as Piłsudski's Baldachim. And he himself was again the peer of the kings. The marshal used this term to reference to the poet Juliusz Słowacki, but uh, again, this applied to him as well. The message is reinforced with regal symbolism of the mausoleum next to the Baldachim in the center of the plate. There is an image of the sun, it's here, you can see 
just here under the feet of this clergyman. And uh, mm, there is the sun surrounded by shields and coats of arms and the copper latch to the stairs in the form of the lion, an obvious symbol of courage and power. The fact that Szyszko Bochusz, and this is a very interesting part, incorporated his own coat of art, um, arms into the shield of the commander is very indicative of the complex relations between architecture and politics, between the ego of the architect and his subservience. His wish to commemorate and immortalize himself could even have led him to jeopardizing his own position as uh, I was a scandal and the chief committee for the commemoration of Marshal Józef Piłsudski filed an official request to remove architects from the position of the chief conservator of Wawel after the illegal transfer, as it was called, of Piłsudski's remains from the crypt of St. Leonard's to the one prepared by Szyszko Bochów. So this was all done in, in secret and Szyszko Bochów was cooperating with the bishop against the wishes of the authorities. A very, uh, again, interesting uh, situation. So we have this, the structures, they convey a message about relationship with memory and about commemorating by means of very specific forms. And um, so, so the impossible uh, object and in, in reaction to the question about absorbing modernity, we decided to reconstruct in the Polish pavilion a baldachim known from the crypt uh, with the sarcophagus of Marshal Józef Piłsudski. And the model was presented in scale one to one, although it differs um, in the emphasis put on the mannerist and a structural concept of its architects and the change of color uh, of black to white. So we have this levitation, um, uh, only very small um, cube, glass cubes are placed here. So, so it's the, the, that's a change between the original structure I and mean, we also uh, change the color. We didn't use the, 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 the green one on the columns. And um, detached from the columns, the slab of the canopy, canopy seems to be levitating in the air, creating a hallucinogenic impossible figure. And that was the impossible figure, the figure that can be drawn but cannot be built. And this was sim symbolic for us for this impossibil uh, impossibility of uh, of uh, related to modernism. First, the construction of the nation. Secondly, in terms of Poland, the construction of the monolithic state. And here, um, and also the, uh, the project, the, the project, the modern project, and the monument, the mo memory where spirits, ghosts, and specters of the national past uh, keep vigil. Uh, and, and here we're coming to the, to the inspiration we had from the works of um, book of Jan Sova, uh, who uh, wrote a book called Phantom uh, Body of a King uh, on Polish struggles with modern form, in which he claimed that um, we kept the body of the real king, but we didn't keep the political body as, uh, uh, as it was kept in the Western democracy. That's why we have this phantom relationship to, to, to modern form. Uh, and um, so we see this uh, piece as a, as a symbol of the constant um, battle between as uh, Kuba Wojnarowski showed it here, between the the the, um, the death and the, the la and life, past and and present and future, and uh, and of course um, this is uh, this shows uh, quite a lot about uh, the Polish culture and and the contradictions. We still have very strongly the cult of the of the death of, of dead heroes and the constant um, uh, association to, to different ceremonies. So we have, the, we celebrate the 1944 uprising, Warsaw uprising against the Nazis, all the, the, the but, but in a way that we uh, sort of reenact them 
we have again this uh, huge catastrophe of Smolensk when the when the Polish authorities were killed uh, or died actually in an airplane crash and and uh, again this uh, this uh, uh, funeral and uh, uh, caused uh, a lot of controversy with uh, with Kaczyński couple uh, being buried at Babo Castle, actually in the very same crypt and um, the Etra script to to Piłsudski's uh, script. So we have this and and and, and this role of the Babo Castle was in a way kept uh, um, kept somehow not visible until this catastrophe when it was revived and 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 uh, we did this piece in 2013 until 2015 the law and justice the right wing party came to power in Poland and and um, the remembering of the of the uh, dead in Smolensk especially the president Lech Kaczyński was became um, uh, another ritual, another reenactment of the celebration of, of death, uh, uh, involving again the very same side as we, as we used in our, in, in our uh, piece. So, um, so we are uh, creating several um, ideological narrations. For example, while referring to the interwar period, we create a narration that we were always modern. We cite Gdynia and show the, the fantastic uh, architecture, but uh, uh, but actually, mm, uh, it, it seems that that Polish modernity was always questionable, and. Um, and in a way, when we come back to these um, very symbolic structures, very strongly, and we play them again and again, uh, I'm not sure whether we are actually uh, creating, um, crossing, trying to confront the real, or trying to confront the traumas, or actually we are somehow uh, repeating the same rituals. So this is the statement about our own work uh, and uh, with Jakub Wojnarowski. Here, for example, we have the uh, uh, the last exhibition on Szyszko Bochusz and we have the, the Oleandry model, which we made, uh, Kuba made into some kind of Castrum Doloris, so the Sarmatian um, uh, uh, celebration of the funeral. Uh, and so, so here are, are the, some of the key notions uh, that I would like to stress uh, at the end of uh, my lecture. So the question of modern form, we have the question of political body and the, somehow of impossibility of the political body. Uh, there is a saying that, the, that uh, by, by Jerzy Giedroyc at the beginning of the 1990s, he, he claimed that Poland is still ruled by two coffins, uh, one of Piłsudski and the other one of Roman Dmowski, the nationalist leader of the interwar period. And, and it still somehow stands valid, although we um, sort of often deny it. So we have this political body. Now we have, uh, again, um, a, a very sort of, uh, difficult position in terms of leader who is not formally a leader but actually leading the country a little bit like Józef Piłsudski. We have the theater and theater of death also. We have very strong attachment to tradition, the memory as it work here. We have myth and national mythology. In a way we have this vicious circle or secure, circular reasoning. So not, by not confronting the traumas, we are bound to repeat them. So we have repetition and a kind of melancholy and uh, in our own, uh, I don't know, in our own experience. And again, the confronting of the real. And here is, uh, the, the, there are several pictures I would like to finish off with. So here is the circular reasoning or circular uh, or vicious circle by Jacek Marczewski. So in, uh, also very melancholical 19th century image. And here is this recreated in a very contemporary uh, drama 
um, directed by Jan Klata of again Stanisław Wyspiański, an absolutely fantastic piece of, of, of theatre, but again uh, very much uh, dealing with the same toposes, toposes and myths. We have the, the uh, Jakub Wojnarowski Contemporary Modernist Monument, so the impossible figure. This is the the, the Kuba Wojnarowski who played with the with Rem Kolha's design for CCTV, so the television, the regime television in China. This is the this form of the of the monument is taken from this very building, and he put it in 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 somehow an ironical context as a contemporary modernist monument and again we have this impossible figure the impossible object that <laughs> that is uh, that was part uh, of our ident identification for this design in, in, in venice and and the final question is that whether with dealing with Shushko Bohush, whose work is uh, so rich and and and, and, and grounded in, in the past, but somehow uh, in our way trying to 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 show it differently and put it in perhaps sometimes uh, an ironical context or or in a broader broader context whether we are keeping uh, we are repeating the, and joining the same uh, vicious circle and looking in the coffins or whether we can somehow uh, try to work it out and, and confront the real so i think this is <laughs> Uh, this is the end uh, of uh, the, the, the final question I would like to ask and now I would like to perhaps move to some questions to Mauga Rata. Thank you so much Dorota for this very interesting um, perspective of this very multifaceted life and work of Adolf Shishko Bochosh, I think it's also very uh, interesting in terms of um, uh, our today's perception of his work and also your comments uh, about the project in um, Venice. I can see that we have uh, one question already and the question uh, was asked in English so i will switch into english and i will ask our interpreter to interpret the question into german um, the question posed by bartomi poteralski uh, is hi thank you for this great lecture which book can you recommend about shushko bohus works including drawings of unrealized projects uh, well, um, I'm in an ambiguous position because I have to advertise our own <laughs> achievements. Uh, but we, as Institute of Architecture, uh, published a monograph of Adolf Shishko mm, Bokhoz. And there are some uh, some uh, unexecuted projects that are pu published there. There is a, a huge uh, estate of Shushko Bohush in the National Archive in Krakow, and this is worth, if while researching, it's worth going there because this is, is quite incredible. We only did part of it, and also for some of the designs I mentioned, uh, there is online the catalog of the of the uh, Biennale. The, of the installation, it, it can be found online this, on Zahenta's site. So there, there, but actually, I think, and there's also uh, the his uh, his part of his estate is placed on Vavo. So the, there is a, an archive on on the Vavo castle, and what what I used were, were the images of the canopy or, and different forms of baldachins were taken from this Vavo archive. So I think as far as 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 um, as the uh, unexecuted design of Szyszko Bochusz is the monograph by Michał Wiśniewski, published by our institute. And also I think uh, there are some good uh, publications by Michał Pszczółkowski dealing with the uh, architecture of Second Republic. So probably also worth uh, searching there. I can't see any more questions. Uh, 
So at this point, I think we uh, can slowly close our last uh, event, series of events. I would, ah, there's one more question, sorry. Sabrina Kirchner has got a question and a question. Thank you so much for the very interesting lecture. I have a question to monumental design. And now we're waiting for the question. Okay. There is a question, and to what extent, to what extent the characteristics of national identity play a role in, and are we waiting for the continuation <laughs> of the question, play a role in um, the identity formation processes within a society? Uh, okay, I would like to have it all together if possible. Could you please? <laughs> I'm still waiting for the ending of the question. Okay, okay. The question is still not complete. <laughs> okay. Somehow it seems the internet connection somehow unstable. Okay, I think uh, dear Sabrina, uh, we know each other, maybe you could send me this question via email and I am going to forward this question to Dorota later on because right now somehow the question is not complete and it's going to be really difficult to answer. <laughs> So I suggest we finish here this very interesting lecture. I would like to kindly thank Dorota for her uh, speech, for her lecture. Thank you to the audience for being here with us, for listening. Um, I wish you all, ladies and gentlemen, a lovely summer. And I hope we're going to see each other in the fall. Uh, we're going to see each other again in the fall. So thank you and have a good evening. Thank mm -hmm. you.